you go, Doctor Who. And if you don't, then you can go. Right, hello guys, Richard and Gurdott here, and today we're going to talk about my five favourite Doctor Who stories of all time. And yeah, let's get into it. At first place is Voyage of the Damned. I think it's an amazing Christmas story. Wilfred's first return. Kylie Minogue's brilliant in it. David Tennant, his performance is on point. And um, all the people get killed off in the Titanic, all but a few. And I love it when people get killed off, claustrophobic, the host killing off people, Christmas vibes, and it's really good villain. And my name's Max, and the little, little golden ding. I love that. And um, Titanic was an interesting one to go down in space. Um, We've got uh, teleports all going round places and the host is a brilliant villain and it's a strong story. I really enjoy it and it is really good music and everything like that. I really, it's one of my favourite Doctor Who stories and I remember watching it with my granddad and my nan and my mum and they're all laughing and enjoying the episode. So I have a really good strong memory of this story and thank you Doctor as the Queen. <laughs> I love it. Um, next up on the list we have um, Oxygen. Now, Oxygen is one of my favourite Doctor Who stories because I really love it. It's claustrophobic. We've got zombies. We've got Bill Potts getting kind of killed off and then kind of not. The actual impact of the Doctor going blind. Nada, I can't. I can't look at anything ever again. I'm still blind. I love that. And Nardal going ballistic at them. And Nardal just giving witty one-liners and trying to look after the Doctor. But also trying to run back to the TARDIS. And Oxygen. Uh, uh, capitalism with the Oxygen suits. And the Oxygen suits are actually killing off people. Is interesting in the most dangerous situation you can find yourself in. Space. The final frontier. A uh, little Star Trek reference I guess you could say as well. And yeah, I really enjoy it. I think it's a solid one single own story to go down so yeah it has to be on the list in my opinion and next up on the list is the doctor falls now this was at my second place but i think something just beats it and i kind of have to give it that so re-watching something else but yes doctor falls at third place is my favorite doctor story well enough in time i think brings it in so well with its dark vibes and i waited for you and the genesis of the site Former Prime Minister. I love that. And then getting into Doctor Falls with without hope, without witness, without reward. And blowing up all the side men, even on the moon, and then getting killed off. And I had a tear to my eye when he got well, deleted. He got pretty much blasted on. And 12 got a lot of beatings in this episode. He got um, electrocuted by Cybermen. He got crashing shit. He got um, shot by a Cyberman. He blew himself up. And then, uh, yeah, he died four times, you know. He's getting beaten. He is getting built and beaten and holding on with his regeneration energy, keeping him going. And he's very weak at this point, but he's trying to get Missy to still with that series arc of series 10. Stand with me. It's all I've ever wanted with, Bill, with Missy and Missy trying to conflict that and I think it's a really good master story as well with the bad side and the good side with John Sim missing I will never stand with the doctor I'm, I'm indeed you will or something like that she, sta she stabs him in the back and the master shoots her it's so cool I think it's the poetic justice of the best way to kill off the master ever in Doctor Who and it will always be that is the master killing himself I love that um, then John C. Master runs off to his TARDIS, but also wants to just get out. He doesn't care about anyone. He just wants to get off this, this stupid space station that he's been stuck on for so long. Tried to rule the space station. It bat landed on him, so he had to end up in a disguise. Mis and then he found out Bill was, uh, was the Doctor's companion, so he tortured her for so long. And Bill, with the struggle of being a Cyberman and um, the upgradation, and her fighting it, and the Mondasian Cybermen was such a lovely touch. And then my favourite Cybermen, uh, the John Lumic Cybermen, you can call it, even though they don't have the C chesting. It was just lovely to see them back. And then we have the Cy uh, the Iron Men Cybermen at the end, the original, uh, the 
the ones we have for present day. I love all that. And then we have Bill's girlfriend saving her at the end and Nardell left on the game station to protect humanity until he can't do it anymore. And then 12 and Bill thinking they're both dead and there we go. And that leads in perfectly into Twice Upon a Time, which I do count as a three-parter and we go off on a journey with the first Doctor. I really enjoy this. Cybermen, two masters, two doctors, in my opinion, this story has. And it has brilliant companions throughout. Yeah, solid story and it has to be on the list. And next up at second place, just beating Doctor Falls, is Journey's End. I absolutely bloody love Journey's End. It has got Sarah Jane, Captain Jack, Torchwood, um, Mickey, um, Rose's mom, Rose, Martha, Unit, um, Rose, uh, Martha's mom, uh, Harriet Jones, former Prime Minister. Yes, we know who you are. Davros, Daleks, Detonate the Reality Bomb, two David Tennants, Catherine Tate, Bernard Cribbins, Donna's mom. Oh, this story had action packed and it could have gone downhill, but it wasn't. It was the end game of Doctor Who and definitely with the reality bomb. And Doctor Who did it first on TV in my eyes. So, ha, take that MCU. The biggest crossover was Doctor Who. Boom. Um, I love it. I absolutely bloody love it. And all the companions in the second part getting trapped. And then it's down to Do the Doctor and Donna. And Donna saves the day. Lovely. And uh, her knowing how to press certain buttons to solve the situation. And we have meetings like Captain Jack meeting Sarah Jane for the first time. Something that's never going to really happen because Sarah Jane's for kids. And Sarah Jane and Torchwood's for adults. We have K-9. We have Luke in this. Clyde and Rani getting a reference. Torchwood. Um, Tosh and Owen getting a reference with uh, uh, Yonto and Gwen. And Reese getting all these lovely references and you know, you feel like the universe is massive again and that's what I love and it's just a strong story with the Daleks at the height of their power it really is this is the last best Dalek story I've seen for a long while and yeah it's incredible um first place now is end of time a lot of you don't like end of time I absolutely bloody love it I think it's the best way for the David Tennant the Tenth Doctor to go out and I've rewatched this story so many times, the most Doctor Who rewatch story I watched in my life. I've probably watched it, n not word of a lie, almost 30 times in my lifetime and never got bored of it. Wilf is incredible. Doc the Donna's mom is perfect as her character. We have Donna's husband who is there, but we don't really need to see him that much. But Donna, we get to see glimpses of her, her life and how she's settling down. And it's finally... Her kind of happy ending, even if she can't remember the Doctor, which she does slightly remember, and it backfires and destroys a few Masters along the way. And we have the Master, John Sim, as every certain human, and these two green aliens, and the worst rescue ever. And then we have David Tennant's best performance as the Doctor, in my opinion. And think of a bubble, but it's not a bubble. The time look time war was time locked sort of thing and the explanation of that and then we have for the end of time itself with Rassilon and the Time Lords all there and my childhood was like <gasps> and I remember going to school the next day and talking about it all and it was exciting and did you see the Time Lords oh my god David Tennant's gone uh, blah blah and it's so fun at that time period of time I think this episode was in 2010 wasn't it very New Year's Day so I would have been 10 at that time so that was a certainly vital point of me talking about it as my childhood. And I bloody loved it. And Wilf was so lovable then. And I love him even more now. Bernard Cribbins, well done. Catherine Tate's performance is that as Donna. And David Tennant as the Doctor one last time. And yeah, it was such a good one. And the Master having to fight the Time Lords and to save the Doctor's life. But then afterwards... um. Wilf is the one that goes. The four knocks was Wilf. Who thought of that? No one. And if you said you did, you didn't. I can't honestly believe I was so shocked to, to first time watching that and going, it's Wilf. No, Wilf, why? And the doctor's going, right then, I will leave you. Because you had to go and get stuck, didn't you? You had to go in this because you were always this. 
and Wilf, it's my honour. And then Wilf, uh, the Doctor accepting his death, but seeing all of his companions one last time. A lot of people don't like this. I love that he goes to see his companions one last time because we actually get Sarah Jane. This is the last time we ever see Sarah Jane, if you think about it. This is the last time we ever see her in Doctor Who. And it's a lovely one of her just waving the Doctor. Uh, obviously, we see uh, in Sarah Jane Ventures, she meets the 11th Doctor, but still, it's a lovely little moment. Uh, we learn that Martha and Mickey are together, which is a lovely thing. And um, then we have Rose in you know, 2005. You're going to have a great year. Uh, and yeah, it's just a lovely send off and the Ood singing the Doctor to his sleep. I don't want to go. And then we have Matt Smith spitting on the console and going, Tirolo! Love it. Absolutely bloody love it. And it is an end of an era and how you do it. And the brilliant one by Russell D. Davis. And that's my five favourite Doctor Who stories. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. And let me know your favourite or your five favourite down in the comments. Have a nice day.